Hi, welcome to Behind the Science with Stat Sports. I'm here at the MLS Supporters Shield Champions, FC Cincinnati. I have the pleasure to talk to the Head of Sports Science and Nutrition, Phil Keane. Hi, Phil. Hey, Darren, it's great to have you here. Hey, man. So, tell us a little bit about your role with FC Cincinnati. So, as you said, I'm the uh, Head of Sports Science and Nutrition. So, basically, what that entails is uh, from turning on GPS units to advising the head coach on the periodization of our volume and intensity within the week to then sitting down with individual players and helping them out with nutrition in regards to whether they're injured or we're looking to hit some composition goals. When I match day model, match day minus one model, how, is, how do you prepare for that for the game day today? What's your key, your key performance outputs there? Yeah, so like you saw yesterday in terms of there was an element of high intensity at the initial start of the session. We actually do most of our preparation from a physical perspective at the early phase of the week in terms of our minus four and our minus three. Um, and then as we get closer to the match day, we sort of tailor down the load and we just focus on more intensive movements like you saw and then we just focus on the tactical scenarios that the, the head coach wants to implement. Nice and, and then when we talk about like our, our high day maybe I think you have it on the Wednesday um, what kind of what's your your difference in metrics that you look at in a live system on a, a high volume day to a, like your 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 high intense days as well? Yeah so we see Wednesday like you said is our our main conditioning day so the emphasis on that is element of volume but also within the volume there is intensity. So can the player sustain that intensity for greater durations and to greater volume within the drills? Nice. Um, so obviously I, I'm, I'm an employee of Statsport, so I, I have to do a little bit of a plug here. So you have the training ground infrastructure. Tell me a little bit about that. How does that operate? Yeah, so obviously we're fortunate to be the first club in uh, North and South America to have this widening infrastructure within the training ground. It's for me, it makes the job so much more efficient in providing live feedback to the head coach or to the relevant athletic trainer or physiotherapist doing rehabilitation. Um, you, as you see in terms of in the footage, you see the guys when they do their max speeds, they're all interested in their numbers straight away. And we have the beauty of getting the players to be, know where their speeds are straight after when they run and we can increase buy-in from that. So what kind of zones do you look at on a percentage of max speed basis? Yeah, so in terms of, we just keep it simple in terms of, right, in terms of the prescription, we look to hit above 95% on their last rep, but prior to that, we'll ease them into it where it may be a 75% exposure to 85, to then allow them to let loose and go to get that dosage that we want within the week. And would, it, would that be, uh, like when you do your maximum speed, would it be right after the warm up or do you kind of do little conditioning games before it and stuff like that? Yeah, so from that, the, the warm up will obviously tailor, be tailored around that drill, yeah. but we make sure that players are activated further from the warm up in terms of doing maybe like a high intensity uh, possession, rondo, and then it makes sure that we know that the players are now about 15, 20 minutes into the session and now really can go and they feel more confident to push themselves to that higher level as well. When we talk about match day preparation here, what are the key things that you like to look at for that, that match day preparation out in the field before the game? So from a preparation perspective, like I said, all your work's done in the week, okay? So, and that's whether that's from the, the head chef and his team who also you experienced yesterday in terms of preparing the players from a, from a fueling perspective, Today on game day, it's more okay, it's now over to the players. The preparation's done, we obviously have our nutritional interventions that we provide, but it's more just making sure the players are activated and ready to go. Well, so I have a unit here in my hand, Phil, an Apex unit, and obviously we want to see a kind of a practical element of how, how you look at the data live uh, within a stadium environment. So can you kind of show me how this works and, and, and we, can, we can see how it works in a live setting? Yes, yeah, so as you can see, we're standing on the field and we've got live feedback right now. Nice. You, could be stand, you could be standing in any area of the stadium, you could even be seated in row Z, or you could be in the boxes with the analysts and you're gonna have the data live to you straight away. Okay, so as I'm walking here, so it's literally picking up right now. Yeah, so at the moment it's showing that your max speed, which probably is true, is uh, three kilometers per hour. Yeah, I need to work <laughs> on my max speed. Uh, when, when you look at this in the standpoint of, of data-wise, with, with the iPad and the ability to connect to multiple iPads, you can even work with data analysts guys and, and, and having feedback as well. Yeah, so the main thing in terms of that, obviously the, the ability to have our game day thresholds within 
within the iPad. So it allows us to see in terms of where players are currently at in the game live. So for instance, if we move a player to a new position which they haven't really performed in before and the load is a lot higher, that's going to be a higher demand on the body. So then within that, we allow us to see where they're at and whether if it's in the first half and all of a sudden they sort of surpass their normative values for a first half, then we could potentially get a little bit more intervention at half time, check in with the athlete and make sure they still feel good. And it's not a case of like taking players out yep. in terms of making sure that they're still available on the pitch. Okay, so it's obviously sports science nowadays sometimes get a little bit of a bad rep in terms of that you're pulling players off the training field when they can't play this game. But it's mainly just there as a guidance, okay? Yeah. So for instance, if a player is playing as a wing back, it's a higher demand, it may just be a little comment to the assistant coach, okay, if he starts to fatigue on the eye and then the numbers also support it, then it may be a case of just maybe having a fresh legs in. Okay. Probably our other final product is our Apple Watch and, and it's a kind of a huge one for getting top ups post game and return to play. How does the Apple Watch work? Yeah, so obviously we, we really utilize the Apple Watch even alongside the live infrastructure. Yeah. With the beauty of that in terms of that the athletic trainers, the physiotherapists can be on another field. And when they're working one-on-one -on -one with a player, they can see straight away in terms of are they hitting those metrics that we've set out for that day. Yeah. Especially in terms of if they're on a longer term rehab and we want to progress them over time, it allows us each time to just have a little check-in and see where they're at and obviously check in with the athlete. Okay, maybe we can push them a little bit more. And and do you do you need actually like the live like uh, receivers to be out on the field, the live beacons, or, or is it can be done anywhere? No, with the with the Apple Watch, that's the beauty. You could be anywhere in the world. And and, and so we'll see like this season where we've gone down to Mexico, we've gone down to Jamaica. And sometimes we take some of the players with us who are doing the rehab and it allows the physios and the athletic trainers to just be there and still monitoring the players. So if there was one metric that you would have to use only if Sonar was going to take away all the metrics and give you one metric, what metric would it be and why? Uh, that's just a really tough question. You've really uh, put me on the spot here. I, I think, obviously, I'm going to sit on the fence a little bit and be like, every metric that we utilize plays a part in how we feedback and monitor the players, okay? Um, it can be anything from distance per minute, looking at making sure we're having that high intensity exposure within the week, to high speed per minute in terms of can they tolerate high speeds within a short space of time and overload them on that perspective. Or it could go and go down to XL and D cells in terms of what's the intensity of them. But I think like we just spoke about in terms of max speed, I think that's a key element of our philosophy that we make sure players are regularly exposed to. As you see in the research, obviously, there's so much out there that supports that, that dosage of it, the vaccine as it's called, but I would probably go with percentage max speed in terms of making sure that the players are regularly exposed to it come game day. So when we talk about performance, where do you, where do you see the performance going in the next five years? Well, every year the game's evolving from a speed perspective and obviously players are now becoming more athletic from that point of view. So I think that would just continue to always evolve. And I think the professional of our players now is so high level that that will always continue to evolve. I think the main thing now is just gonna be the efficiency of the technology that is available to us. And from that point of view, that it's just gonna get so much quicker to access it and feedback more instantaneously than having to go back through like multiple files like we used to. Just finally, and then just the final like stats sports, any story, any success stories about how our, the stats sports product has been used in a player setting that has improved either player performance or, or got any athletes back in return from a return to play standpoint? Yeah, I think the, the main success story, obviously, winning the Supporter Shield last year for the first time in the club's history. And the, the main thing with that was availability, obviously, keeping our best players available. But then with that is able to monitor them and having the reliability of the stat sports units and obviously the technology that you guys have provided the training ground and the stadium is that we had confidence in the product and obviously then the information that was providing us so the success story i probably would just go back to when obviously when we had that 10 games in five weeks of 10,000 miles traveled in terms of that we just done the basics get the basics consistent so whether that was in terms of post-game running, in terms of making sure the non-starters had kept their loads up, or whether it was the starters making sure that they're recovering as much as they could. Phil, thanks a million for, for letting me come here and it's watch a pleasure, the game. Darren. And best of luck uh, today uh, with against Colorado and speak to you soon. Cheers, thank you very much.